Kathy, why don't you start a little bit? Um, just kind of on your path and especially with, I mean, flute festivals and community engagement um, and just tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, I, I was sharing earlier with Christina that my career has really included a lot of zigzags in my life path. And um, I think that I, I, sometimes I feel like I'm a champion of figuring things out when they don't go the way you expect them to go. <laughs> so um, I, I have a doctorate in flute performance from Florida State. And I, uh, Rebecca Johnson had written an article a few years back about um, the experiences that I had with, with starting the, being part of the catalytic uh, involvement of um, getting the Latin American Flute Festival started. And so I, my life has really, um, like I was saying, kind of done a serpentine um, series of events. I, if I, if I start back with, um, I did my master's degree at, in Wisconsin, in Madison, Wisconsin, and um, that's, of course, I, I felt like I was really beginning to launch my career there, and the, as soon as I graduated, I went to their grants, and, or to the, to the main office, and discovered this they had a, a binder that was full of all the different job openings for anybody in the music the school of music to look at and and so i was looking thumbing through that and there were three flute positions in at universities and um all of them required a phd and i was just finishing with my masters and had no plans for the PhD quite yet. And so um, I thought, oh my gosh, what do, I, what do I do? I was ready to conquer the world. So I went to the grants and contracts office on campus and just collected a whole bunch of brochures and was lying in bed one night reading through all of these things for, for study abroad and you know just any kind of opportunity. And I came across the Fulbright foundation pamphlet and I was reading through that and I thought well okay let's see where would I like to go and and um, I looked at Germany and England and and then I was as I would, was reading through I realized that they that for the grants you need to have background in the language of the country that you'd like to go to as a scholar and I had studied Spanish so I thought okay I'll go to Spain maybe that that would be a great opportunity and um, under the Spanish category Spain said that they described um, who they were interested in were physicians and people involved in the medical field and so I thought, okay, well, I'm out there. What do I do? And I looked through Latin America and under Peru, I had to look it up, true confessions, I had to look it up on, on the globe to see where Peru exactly was at that point. And um, it said musicians were specifically encouraged to apply. And so then it was like, oh, okay. So that's, I went through that process then of, applying for the Fulbright grant and that fortunately worked out in my favor and sent me down to Latin America which is something I had never really imagined that I would do and and so I, I was the principal flutist for the Peruvian National Symphony Orchestra for a couple of years and while I was there I also studied the indigenous flutes so I did I did some studies that were academic and I also was performing. And so I, that's really how things took off for me. I think that the main part of the process is to figure out um, leaving yourself open to just pretty much anything and just making a lot of friends and meeting people along the way. And then they come back in your life in times that you don't expect. And all of a sudden it creates another opening in, in your door doorway there. And so, um, 
but I will say that as as time developed, I mean, I don't want to take the whole time with my life story, but but I, you know, getting married and having kids along the way altered my path as well. And so I, you know, I I had a year-long lecture guest lectureship in Australia the year that I got married. And then as soon as I got back, I got I was pregnant. And then it was my husband's turn to pursue his career interests because I had been, he'd followed me for mine. And so then I had to kind of focus on the family for a while, but I maintained contact and involvement with, with my friends in Latin America that I had worked with. And so I would return in the summer times there, but, but during this, during the main academic year, I was, practicing and teaching privately and taking care of my family. And so that has just evolved in so many different ways. And of course, now my kids are grown and I'm back into working more full time with my career and that sort of thing. But I, I think that the, the constant throughout uh, my life has been maintaining contact with the people that you love, that you meet along the way. And one thing leads to another. You see somebody after 20 years and they say, oh my gosh, let's get together and do a concert. And then you do that some other in some other part of the world. And then that leads to one other thing. And you meet a student that, that you do have a very special relationship. And, you know, just it, life just keeps evolving. So I would just encourage you to remain open to think outside of the box, study other languages because that opens beautiful doors. It changed my life for sure. And um, just keep yourself really open to, to many, many things. I, I have, because of my, although my, the, the focal point of my career has been performance, having studied those indigenous flutes while I was in Peru, I now serve as a rostered artist for the Pennsylvania Arts Council going into the schools and teaching them about about those flutes. So you just never know what's going to happen. So just encourage you to, to make lots of friends and, and be open to anything. Thanks so much, Kathy, for starting us off. Uh, Louisa, would you like to just speak a little bit about yourself next and we can just kind of go along with everyone and learn a little bit about you and your paths. Um, and then kind of circle around to some questions or general uh, topics as well. Okay, with pleasure. So I'm Italian, so uh, life in Italy is a little bit different and worse, a little bit different from other countries, especially because, you know, uh, women were not supposed to be on the stage Many years ago, when I was young, it was not allowed to me to travel alone. So it was very, very difficult to start this career. But my idea was always to be a soloist, to be a musician, especially. So I decided when I was 21st and 21, I decided to be a musician. After I've been in Siena studying with Severino Gazzelloni, this was my open mind professor. I decided to be a musician. So I was just following my idea. And I started a very difficult time because uh, of money, because of work, uh, because of traveling, because of permissions, restrictions and everything. But I was um, very sure of my choice. And I went on and I always had to work and study together because it was the only way to go on, on this career. So I met a wonderful professor on my road. I went to Paris to study with Raymond Guillaume and this was my main professor for many, many years in Paris. But in the same time, I was also teaching in Italy. So I had to travel a lot. But I was studying and um, taking care to, to, to make my own choice. Especially when I was, uh, uh, I had to decide because it was at one time I was in a Scala of a Teatro La Scala in Milano. And I had to decide if I wanted to go on in orchestra or 
teaching the conservatory. The conservatory in Italy is like Academy of Music. And I decided to stay in the academy because um, you have to choose, you cannot do both. So I went on to teach. Now I'm almost uh, at the end of my career of teaching, 43 years of teaching. And I went on to practice and studying and making also competition. And um, especially uh, I decided to, to be a soloist. Um, and in this uh, perspective, Raymond Gill was a wonderful teacher and professor. He told me, Luisa, you have to follow your own ideas and to find out your own path. Uh, it's beautiful for everybody to play Mozart concerto with orchestra, but I think that the best choice is to find something new, some innovation. And so I did. I did and I created my own um, uh, show that was almost one hour alone on the stage with contemporary music. I was just uh, playing all the flutes and dress and undress myself, transforming persons and also in inventing text. And so this show gave me a lot, a lot of possibilities. I started to travel a lot because it was a unique idea. And I started to be, to have some invitation from China, from Japan, from all over the world. And so there was really the starting of my career. And in this time I had to teach, so I was always traveling back. And also um, I had a family, so my child is now 25 years old and I had to share my time between family, teaching and um, career. But I'm very happy that I was struggling with all these difficulties, but at the end, I was able to find my, my space in the flute uh, world. And that's all. <laughs> this is my, my, my history, my story. Thank you, Louisa. Uh, Hannah, would you like to speak next? Sure, gladly. So I, um, I just want to kind of piggyback off of um, what both Louisa and Kathy said about being open-minded. And, and for me in particular, I at various points was pretty sure I knew exactly what I wanted to do and am not doing any of the exact things that I thought I wanted to do um, because that changed at, during every degree, during every, in every location that I've lived, I found something more specific or new that I wanted to do. So I, I started actually with a, um, I got my bachelor's degree at Oklahoma City University. And at that time, I didn't have any interest in teaching. I, I had taught some, but I was just only interested in performing. Um, and then when I, I got my master's degree actually with Angelita Floyd at University of Northern Iowa and it was there that I realized I loved teaching and it was kind of through through observing her teaching and experiencing it that I realized that was actually a huge passion of mine and I loved it very much and um, so then I kind of decided to go ahead and, and get a doctorate um, and so I, I did some university teaching adjunct work and then moved back to Texas and got a got a doctorate at UNT uh, with Terry Sunberg and James Scott but I while I was doing that I kind of had been looking for something unique the entire time I wanted to have something different to do uh, something that not everybody else was doing musically and so I during all of my degrees, I, I took, I played in the jazz band and I took improv and I kind of played around with a lot of different stuff than kind of my classical uh, focus. And so while I was getting my doctorate, I, I was in a quintet and met a clarinetist, Cheyenne Cruz, that we kind of realized that we had a lot in common and loved playing together. And she is a bass clarinet specialist and um, had some experience working with live electronics. And so we, when we finished playing in that quintet, we were like, we have to keep working together somehow. So we just 
decided to start uh, start working with live electronics and foot pedals and and make some stuff work and we ended up kind of having to write our own music and we thought let's do it let's make it work because there's not much for bass clarinet and flute and live electronics in the world <laughs> but there is now um, and so we just kind of started through trial and error making things work um, we were like, I wonder if we could. So we do a lot of, of live looping. We do a lot with, with live processed electronics and chamber music. And as we got into it, we realized that it worked extremely well. And a lot of the kind of extra things that I had done and learned about actually ended up kind of being things I was using more than, than some of the, the more traditional training that I had. Um, and so through that, I, and now we have have a duo woodwire duo that that is one of my favorite things that i do um and i'm so proud of it because we kind of created it and came up with it and it took a lot of uh, i mean there's a lot of things we've done that did not work um but i i think i really learned through that and i tell my students all of the time that it's so important to not put yourself in a box of what you think you're going to do exactly and then only only study things and only practice things that fit into that box. That's not to say you don't have a focus. That's not to say, I mean, I, I did, I did solo competitions and I did, I did the, the um, orchestral auditions and I, you know, I have done all of that and continue to do a lot of that, but I, I ended up using some of the classes and the things that I never, never saw myself using going forward. And um, so that's been been really fun for me to kind of explore and realize and I, I think that it's it's a tough career it's a tough career and it's a it's competitive and I think it's so important to to be open-minded and just like Kathy was saying to be willing to try new things to be willing to try something that sounds crazy and there you know there's a lot of steps um, that that uh, Dr. Cruz and I and Woodwired have have tried a, a new technique or a new something and then looked at each other and thought, okay, this is terrible. We, we've got to scratch this. But then through that, we have found some things that are actually very cool, that are really fun um, and and kind of a niche for us that, that we are able to go into a university and talk to the clarinets, talk to the flutes, talk to the electronic um, music people talk to the composers perform give you know and it kind of encompasses a lot of different interests for a lot of different people so uh, and i i never never saw that for myself so um just the same same thing kathy said just being open-minded i think is really important as you go through a music education because you just never know the thing that that might end up being your favorite thing or that you might end up being really good at or or uh, beyond just your your normal education. So that's kind of what I, what I would say. And yeah, that's all really great, Hannah. Thank you. And Mihi, if you would like to continue and uh, talk a little bit about yourself. Ooh. Have to unmute there. Yeah. Yes, yes, I just did it. Um, yes, I am originally from Korea and I grew up in Europe. Uh, mainly in Germany when I was little and um, when I was 15 I was at that time in Korea and um, I wanted to come study in Europe so my experience is mainly based in Europe and English is not my first language so um, and uh, so mainly in Germany and in France so I had to choose if I would like to live in Germany or in France and um, it became came out that I'm actually living in France. I did my choice a long time ago um, because this kind of multiculturalism that I had in my mind, I could not define who I was or what identity I should have to base my career on, um, came that in Paris I found kind of a connection and it worked well. So um, it's tough terrain, terrain, I don't know how you say it in English, but um, the most important thing I would say is that um, you need to know where your heart goes because the opportunities are very interesting and I agree that um, 
you should just be open-minded and discover yourself and your ambitions. But also I was thinking that why on earth would I live in France? Um, and it came suddenly because one day I was just watching the Olympic Games and there was this um, La Marseillaise in French and, um, and it, it just moved me. So from that day on, I had no job, no connection, nothing. I was just a freshman in the Paris Conservatory, tough school, um, and I had nothing. I just had a big plant in my apartment. I was just hugging my big plant and crying all day long. And I said, I want to live here. So that was the first point where I started to build a career. And um, I'm very glad because it happened quite well thanks to help of many, many people that I'm very grateful of. And um, there were some things that I um, took as my principles. Um, the first is that never do the same mistake twice. It was one of the things that um, I really, really wanted to say because everybody is entitled to one mistake but if you repeat the mistake it's kind of um if you are letting it go for yourself and this was one of the things that i would never allow me to do it was very hard and the second thing is that um i try to always listen to people who wanted to help me so um it's very strange because Maybe some people would think that today I'm very stubborn and I have my ideas and so on, but I always really listen carefully to this. And, um, and uh, the, the third one is that when you want to do something, please don't give up. That's one of the things. So I'm, I'm kind of div diverging because I, I, I was supposed to talk about my career. I'm sorry. Um, so briefly born in korea when i was three we moved to germany when i was nine we moved back to korea when i was 15 i came to france for studying the flute when i was 18 i moved back to germany and then i came back to france and from that point on i'm not gonna say my age anymore and um and then i did the masters i have three masters i have uh the troisième cycle um, of the uh, Paris Conservatory, which is considered like a DNA. And then I did the uh, teaching diploma in France and I got a job and I'm teaching in France since 22 years at the Ecole Normale de Musique de Paris. So, um, and there has been a lot of ups and downs. I have been in an amazing experience for 10 years in contemporary music. So I so under uh, understand well the experience what you're saying, my dear, dear colleagues. And, um, but right now I'm more, fo more focused on teaching. I, at some point I perform 200 concerts a year, but right now I'm reducing it a lot and uh, voila, that's it. So it's kind of a mix. I'm very sorry, it's, I'm nervous. Thank you, Mihi, for your input. Um, and I think that's what's so interesting is everyone's career and life is a mix and there are ups and downs and twists and turns. Um, I think it's just a really valuable part of getting to listen to this. Um, so again, I encourage anyone watching to comment their question down below if you'd like any of the panel to answer it. Um, one question we do have from Aaron on the Zoom call is, uh, let's see. Uh, so she said she would love to know um, if anyone had pushback when carving their own path while you were still working on your degrees. Uh, in other words, you know, did you find um, yourself pressured to learn in the classical and traditional way uh, before feeling like you could branch out uh, and if that inhibited you at all? A question for anyone. Feel free to jump in. I can, I'll, I can chime in here. Uh, for me, I feel like I was extremely lucky. I had most of my, my mentors and teachers uh, were people that I studied with because I wanted to study with, because I, I, I connected with them already. And they, you know, all of my, the people in my life were incredibly supportive. However, you know, I was, as it relates to Woodwired specifically, doing something that was kind of strange and hard to explain. And so um, I think for me, there was definitely, I think, people in my life that didn't 
as I was explaining it, didn't fully understand what I was, what I was doing. And, and in my mind, I kind of was like, okay, I completely understand where you're coming from, but wait till you see the final product kind of a thing. And, and you're never going to have, you know, everybody has different tastes and it's not, you know, everybody's thing, but as a general rule, I, I, I feel like people that were in my life, teachers, mentors, colleagues that, that really cared about me and wanted me to be successful and knew me, uh, I think generally have been incredibly, incredibly supportive. So I think it's kind of a balancing act between, for me, between, between taking criticism that comes from a good place, but also being willing to, to kind of push through some of that and to, to get to the final product. Um, so. Yeah, I, I'd like to jump in and add to that, that uh, I, I also had a tremendous amount of support all through all of my studies, but there was one instance when I was an undergraduate that there was a guest artist that, that, was, that came to give a master class in a concert, and I was chosen to play for the master class, and after, afterwards I asked her, I said, so what do you think? Do I have what it takes? You know, it's such an open-ended question, right? And um, she said, I don't think so. And I was stunned. And then, I, you know, and then I, I realized, oh my gosh, you know, she doesn't even know me. And I just played, played for 15 minutes for her. And I was an undergraduate. And so then when I did go on to to my master's studies, I had, in sharp contrast, I had a chamber music professor who talked to our ensemble, and he didn't know my story, but, but he said, and listen, don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't make it as a musician. There's a place for everyone. <laughs> and so, I, you know, that was several years after I had had that first encounter. And, and it was really reassuring to me, even though my spirit, I was shocked at, at the initial comment um, that that guest artist had made. My initial spirit was not affected by that totally. And because I knew, I know myself, right? And, and I just, I share that with you all because I don't, I don't want anybody to, if you come across someone, that is discouraging to you, do not, I mean, it's important to listen to the, to the criticisms, like you were saying, Hannah, it's important to be open to that, but use it to make yourself better, you know, and, and find out what, where the criticism comes from, first of all, and, and what you can possibly do to overcome whatever you were being criticized for, and, and I, I really feel like that just helps you grow and just keep that determination with you because I've, I've had this beautiful career. <laughs> and, and that, so that it, had I taken that person's remark after knowing each other for 15 minutes, then I, you know, if I had taken it too much to heart, I might, I, I might have a totally different career. <laughs> so just be aware. Thank you. Thank you for that. We have another question from Sophia. Um, so she said that she has heard that students should consider completing their bachelor's and master's degrees at different schools and wanted to know your thoughts. And Louisa said she'd like to start this one off as well. She's muted. Unmute. Yeah. It's okay now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Sophia, the idea to, to complete your studies, uh, bachelor and master with the other experience, I think is excellent. Me, uh, I am always encouraging my students to finish bachelor, for example, with me, and then to go abroad to try other experience. Now, in Europe, it's very easy because we have Erasmus, system. I don't know if you have the same in USA. I think so. But anyway, for us, it's quite easy because there is a system um, among the academies 
in Europe, uh, you can spend one year or two years abroad studying with other teachers, other professors. And this net of teaching is working very, very well because you are just improving not only your uh, flute life, but also your life. So you can speak other languages, you can um, know other cultures, other way to live, other um, bureaucracies in the work that uh, so how to make uh, documents and other rules respecting other rules so you are growing a lot and uh, so i suggest you to change and not only with the bachelor and master but also with doctorate studies there are three st studies so and i want to say something i forgot to tell you uh, when I was explaining my story. I never stopped to study and I did um, my master degree degrees uh, also in other subjects. Uh, I have um, a degree, master degree and a doctorate in um, comparison of literatures and uh, try to open, my, uh, open your mind in other subjects, help you to, 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 to have other perspectives also in music. And uh, when I was studying poems and poets and uh, literature, for me, it was very, very important to understand also some part of interpretation. And uh, so, and I never stopped to study also with flute. I had my doctorate degree while I was teaching my bachelor in the conservatory. So um, you can also go on for a long time to good teachers, good professors, and uh, you will be very satisfied. And uh, I was trying to visit many, many master classes during the summer courses. This is also very good for everybody. And uh, you can take what you think is important for you. Don't take everything, but all professors have something to tell. Only one thing, but is important. So you collect all the things and then you make your own idea of playing music and flute. Can I just add a little bit to that about the last question? I, I c agree completely. For me, I think it's not just about the thing I value at having studied at different universities is not just what I learned, but also the networking and the people that I encountered at every place that I was and all of which are, I, I have people from every place I have been around that are still in my life and have helped me in some way or helped me um, to further my career or change my mindset and not just from a, a performance perspective, but also a teaching perspective, like just studying with, with different people and in different different parts of the world or country. Um, just like you were saying, Louisa, it, it makes you a more well-rounded person and it makes you, um, I, I learned things I did not want to do as a teacher. I learned things I did want to do as a teacher. I learned, you know, different ways of expressing things and different ways to feel and just different, I, I think in general, just the more people that you are around, the more colleagues and students and teachers that you're around, the more of your own ideas you're able to form because you have you've experienced a full gamut of personalities and problems and successes and so i would just kind of add i i, I agree with that um i have a question of course i have a question because um when you change teachers um and, or schools this is coming from personal experience um should you go to somebody who appreciates your playing or go to somebody who does not like your playing it's one of the questions that people ask me very often and i i would love to know uh, to hear what you think about this hmm i think that you probably need to think in terms of what what your goal is if 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 you are not satisfied with your playing, then that would probably be what would lead you to someone else who is not satisfied with your playing. 
right? To get a, to get a different perspective, to try to try different angles. That's that's what I would think. But but I I guess I guess for me, I, when I auditioned, I didn't for graduate school. I didn't audition at very many places for both my masters nor my my doctorate. I only auditioned at one place, and I I just. I had a feeling that I was expressing myself, my heart, and so I think that I, I was looking, I, I went to those specific schools because I wanted a teacher that could understand my heart and appreciate it and help, help me grow in that direction. But if, you, but if you are frustrated with your own playing, then I would suggest, yeah, find somebody who who says, you know, you it sounds like you've you've got something, but I, if I were you, I would really do this, you know, to, to adjust things. Um, I feel like it has to be a balancing act of someone who believes in you and likes you that you connect with on some level, but also isn't going to go easy on you and not help you improve. I mean, right. I, I think teachers being hard on you is what makes us improve. Like I don't, I did, I did not want a teacher that would just tell me I sounded great all of the time. Right. Um, and, and that results in some really difficult lessons and some really difficult weeks, but also fundamentally, I think it needs to be someone who, who does believe in you and see. He's something in you, obviously, I think it kind of has to be balanced. Yeah, definitely. I, I, me too, I think it's very important um, that people believe in you, that's what you're saying. Um, Hannah, uh, it's it's mostly um, if the teacher can see where you want to go or see a kind of a perspective, right, about your and your ambitions. Um, but if it's just being mean or just being annoyed about your playing, then you have nothing to do there, right? That's how I think. And we do have another question uh, from Ruby, uh, who said that they are just about to start their bachelor's uh, at the Royal Academy of Music in London, um, and is wondering if you have any advice about what kind of goals uh, they should be setting for themselves uh, in their playing and their practice as an undergraduate. I don't... Whoever would like to talk, go ahead. Yeah, go, go ahead, Nancy, um, go ahead. I, I go ahead, okay. Um, I think in Europe you have two differentiations about the career. Either you want to go to into, into an orchestra career or you want to do um, more free, like in contemporary music or performing or teaching or whatever. And when you want to go into the orchestra um, career, you are very early. Um, formed very early. So as an undergraduate, you should follow all the repertoire which is required, the stand, uh, standing, the, the, the flute sound, the, the technique, everything. Um, it should be very, very normalized and, and suited into the box and which is marvelous and it's amazing because it's one of the most beautiful jobs in the world, right? Um, on the other hand, if you decide to um, get yourself a little bit more freedom or something, then um, it's more individuality which is asked. And at that point, uh, you should um, focus maybe on uh, exotic repertoire or uh, kind of something to, to find a signature of yourself as soon as possible. On the other hand, you can always switch from one goal to the other, but I wouldn't be confused. I would say that, let's say that the first year you're focusing on the orchestra or on the other, and the next year you're going to switch or whatever. As, as um, Kathy said at the beginning, um, you need to have an open mind, but at the same time, you should not be confused. So um, it's, I think it's important to give yourself enough time to settle something on an idea and to dig, dig, dig in deep and then choose whatever, whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm completely agree with Michi, um, and I would also 
tell that uh, for a young student, a young flutist, it's important to find his own personality. So it's not so easy to understand immediately if you want to be in an orchestra or to be a freelance soloist or to be a teacher. But everybody has his own talent and you should just look for it. And could be the teachers can help you to find out your personality. I have many students and some of them are shy, for example, but excellent in explaining things in teaching or other are very precise and very um, stubborn and they follow methodically all the exercises and they are very precise, for example, in excerpts of uh, uh, orchestra, they are very um, concentrated and clever, so they're, they're for them is easy and they love to stay with other people in orchestra. For example, I give you um, my, my uh, experience. Um, I started very young to, to do what we call in Italy um, some uh, training for, for orchestra, but uh, very difficult. So you have to go in a very, very place far away and play in a very difficult uh, stage. And, and um, I immediately realized that I didn't want to be a flutist in an orchestra. And although I did a competition for uh, Milano Orchestra della Scala, I knew in my heart that I didn't want to stay all my life there. And my personality was different. I wanted to create something alone. I wanted to create my own stage, my own program. So I immediately decided that I would have not been in this direction. So I think you should experiment your own character and your own personality and decide what is more easy for you. What is more easy to be in orchestra, to be with others, or to be a soloist, to be a teacher, and then take time uh, to decide to first. I agree with both with both Michi and, and Luisa and these ideas. And one one thing that I would really encourage you, especially as just beginning your studies, your professional for your professional life. There is so, there are bazillion flutists, excellent flutists in the world. And, and sometimes we can feel overwhelmed with the pressure of what's out there and um, comparing yourself too much. And I think that while it's really important while you're making these kinds of decisions, it's important to, to, um, listen to others to get ideas don't let it drive you in such a way that you begin to practice in an unhealthy way in terms of um like overdoing it technically you know spending hours and hours and hours it's important for you to kind of make an intelligent plan and um, with your studies and whatever pathway you choose, you should make sure that your practice time is efficient. And I would encourage, I encourage my students to play for very intensely for shorter periods of time and then take a break and then come back and then really give it your all. And then that to me is so much more efficient. And I, I have had a, a, one student who has gone on to, um, to another teacher for a degree and she just really overdid it and has been struggling physically now with, with her hands and arms. And so um, of course, you know, there are probably a, a, a list of things that, that go together to cause that sort of situation. But, but my point is, is that, that when you, as you're trying to decide your path and how to handle your studies, take good care of yourself. And, and um, the idea of the long suffering artist is, 
is doesn't it doesn't have to be that way and i love it for example that louisa commented on her extra her other degrees in literature and these these are the kinds of things that you want to incorporate into your life because we're not just technicians we we have to be constantly sharing your heart sharing emotions sharing life and um, if you spend, if you dedicate a lot of your time to just only being a technician, then you won't be able to communicate the same kinds of messages that, that others will. Yeah, I completely agree, agree with you, Katie. And also, I wanted to tell to the students, sometimes I tell my students, don't practice, don't practice, it's too much. You are fixed on the flute and technique and you, Use the idea of the music. It could stay away from practicing. Go uh, for a walk. Go for a, for a meeting with friends because this is refreshing your mind. It's better, and it's working. It's working really very good. So, so no. Of course, you have to practice. Right. <laughs> Don't be a maniac in practicing. This is not the right way to go on. Sometimes um, I do this little game with my students. Um, what they think there is their strength and what they think that others think is their strength. It's very interesting because you can, you realize that people have totally different conception of the other one and don't, don't know how to define themselves in the eyes of the other person. And um, that's very interesting because um, then it comes out with, within the discussion how 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 um, how tough you are with yourself, and then on the other hand, how how much you fear the the, the criticism of the others, and and then probably this is the one which terrifies young artists so much that they are wasting their time by waiting waiting before. Um, getting into one idea. So um, what I wanted to say is that um, you, if you wait too long, there's always somebody else who's going to do it before you. And when you're second, then you must do it better than the first one. And that's difficult. That's very difficult. So yes. my idea was that um, if you have an idea, just if you can't do it next month or right now, then do it right now because maybe next month there will be a colleague which is doing it already. And then you have to put in three times more, four times more effort to make it perfect and be better than somebody else. And then so on. Each idea that you have is important and is unique because it pops up in your head. And um, when you have the idea, then just, just go, just go. Don't waste time. It's, it's really something that I have learned and I would love to say. Especially today that we have to react so quickly for everything. <laughs> but, totally, yes. totally. Yes, and also Michi, I wanted to tell because uh, I was teaching to students of Michi one, last, last summer was, huh? was Yes, a, last summer, yes, already. Yes. And I wanted to answer to Sof Sof Sofia Kormak. Uh, regarding the fact to change um, professors. Sometimes when I tell an idea to my students, it doesn't work because uh, it's too much the same. It comes another professor saying the same thing and it's working. So <laughs> you remember <laughs> last time was the same. I just told your student the same you tell all the year and it was working in one minute because I could be my Italian accent was different. <laughs> so no, it's the charming of Lisa. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> because maybe it's, it's put into other worlds, but we have kind of, we, we are all um, ladies. So maybe we, <laughs> was what you say is what we say over and over. It's like mom saying the same thing over and over. It comes in. And it's another okay. You told to be second, uh, to the second, but also second, to be second as a positive uh, perspective because it's important not to be in views, but to take the fact that you are second to improve 
and to be better. This is a good chance to be second, a good chance, because you go on. If you are always the first, you have nothing to, to reach any longer. So it's also good to be second. Like driving in the dark, there's a car in front of you and you can follow it. <laughs> not, so much, not so dangerous, but uh, <laughs> in, a way, in a positive way. Mm. And we do have another question from Kathy uh, Miller. Um, and so she asked, what are some other non-flute related passions that you have that it have influenced your careers and how? I can answer immediately because I made a lot of sport. When I was young, I made athletic and I won a lot of medals and also volleyball for a long, long time. And um, my decision was to be athletic or musician. Then, of course, music was the first love and I, I, I stopped completely with the sport. But sport was very important for my resistance, my body, my resistance and... and uh, and also the studies in literature, always studying in my life, poem, literature, languages, everything is just a passion that opens your mind. Yeah, that's great. I, I, maybe I didn't earn quite as many medals as you, as it sounds like you did, Louisa, but I was, I was always, my, <laughs> my father was a tremendous influence for me and he actually, he was not musical at all. We would joke and say he couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. But, but he, what he taught me in life, he, he taught me how to sail a boat and he was a track and cross country coach. And so being on the water, of course, translates so often to music, right? And, and um, so like when I was in doing my master's studies in Wisconsin, I was on the sailing, in the sailing club because the university's right there on a lake, which is so beautiful. And then, and then with his um, influence with running, of course, because I was a, a loyal daughter, I, I wanted to be on the track team always. And so that actually has led me to, to organize um, one of the activities that I do for my nonprofit charitable organization is a, a 5K. Um, it's called, well, the group, the organization is called the Flutopia Initiative. And we, what we have is the Flutopia 5K. And so I plant musicians all around the route. And uh, we have a group of flutists that we play the flight of the bumblebee instead of having a gun shoot off at the beginning to start the race. And then, and then people run around the route and listen to musicians all the way around. So I've kind of woven, woven the athletics together with the music. For me, I have two. One is one is pretty serious, and one is really silly. But they both have impacted me. I uh, I'm very into into fitness and uh, doing a lot of different kinds of training. And for me, it it impacts. I, I started it not related to flute, and then realized how much it impacted my playing uh, very very dramatically. Uh, just to the physical engagement and being fit and breathing and things like that. So I I use a lot of that with my with my students as well I make them do all sorts of crazy things uh, while they're practicing and playing and and all of that um, so that's I think that's probably been my longest passion outside of outside of music um, but and this is this is the really silly one but I also uh, really enjoy um, kind of nerdy games like Dungeons and Dragons and oh. things like that that you uh, use your imagination and your mind and and you kind of like like kind of improv acting sort of things um, that that gets your kind of creativity and your mind going and um, has really helped me actually with with composition and having ideas for for uh, pieces that I write and things like that um, just kind of learning to think outside the box and and be creative and improv and and things like that so the, I, those two things have kind of are my two hobbies outside of music, I guess. For me, I think the biggest disappointment that I gave my parents was that I, would, I did not become a painter like everybody else in my family. Um, they are all very um, painting oriented art, graphics and, and um, classical art and abstract. Uh, my father was an engineer, so um, kind of I started earning my money 
that is by doing some graphic designs. So that's one of the things that I did. And it's kind of now it's helping me because it, right now we have so much on social media and everything. So I, I guess that, um, that it's very clear what I don't like. And when I don't like, I just throw it away. But I don't, I, I didn't really study anything. It's just like family influence. Um, the other thing that I really like is language. This is some of the things I so envy you because I'm absolutely not, not sportive and I'm really bad in sports. So um, it's one of my biggest admiration. So on the other hand, I like languages and I love um, reading dictionaries. So I just read the same dictionary in many languages and then um, to find out some synonyms. So it's one of the most interesting things that I like. It's to have the same meaning with different words. And then you have the different variation nuances and, and so on um, to express yourself. And this is very, very something that I enjoy all the time in the languages I speak. I speak quite a few in um, especially love reading Shakespeare because I absolutely don't understand what he's saying <laughs> but I just like the sound of, of the the words it's so funny and and yes it's language I think it helped me a lot actually yeah speaking too quick <laughs> for us it's very difficult to follow you <laughs> I do not you the native languages ah. <laughs> they are speaking very very quick and very very difficult i had to concentrate a lot this evening to understand i think we're going to learn a lot of english words today <laughs> <laughs> i understand better you than anna and kathy of course because their own language is very they, they, they speak very quickly and so for us it's not so easy to follow but i think we did huh? oh Actually, when... <laughs> I think one question um, that I have that I think all of you have various experience with is um, just to kind of finish off, you know, what tips or advice would you have for a lot of these young musicians that are maybe wanting to put together a festival or a nonprofit or commission pieces or even just planning a large performance when it's not necessarily a grade in school for you? Um, how did you go about, you know, planning those and having those connections and um, just kind of all of those different areas that different um, that all of you kind of have different experiences in? I, for me, and this is this was like the most uncomfortable thing for me, but is is you just have to be bold and ask people if you can play. I think I think when when we started out, we just kind of this is where the networking comes in and the the having contacts is just reach out to people that you know and ask if you can play. Um, can I visit? Can I play? Can I perform? Be you know be bold um, about asking for those, and you won't always get to. But I think you have to you have to kind of tap into your network that you've created of people and, 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 you know, people, if you have good relationships with, with the people in your life that they want to help you. And so I think you have to be, be bold about asking for those, for those things and opportunities. That, I totally agree. The being bold is emphasis on that because <laughs> it is hard to ask, ask for support and you have to believe in your own ideas, of course to to get you going down the road there but the i that's what i have found and one thing that's been really beautiful for me actually is um i've i've been working on a book and um also combining that with with planning the flutopia initiative benefit concerts i have just tried to be bold and write write letters to these flutists many of them i've met but don't necessarily know really really well um and extend invitations and, and explain what your goals are and and i i am so happy to report our flute world is so wonderful <laughs> that there, i just really have have had such a positive response from from so many flutists. Of course, there are some that it's not their cup of tea and, and we respect that. But 
but I think that, that the being bold is, is the feeling confident and trusting in, in the good hearts of folks that are out there. And, and you, I don't know, I, this, like, for example, that Flutopia 5K that I referred to, um, th this will be the eighth year that we're doing it. And, and there's a local music company in town that they helped me sponsor the very first event. And of course I knew that it was a good situation for getting for them because it would, I held the event at their store. And so it was gonna, you know, draw business to them. And so we helped each other in that respect. But eight years later, I'm no longer doing events in their store and they're still helping. And so, and you know, and I still feel a little bit awkward about having to ask, well, what do you think? Is it okay this year, you know? And they're always like, yeah, anything you need. So I think that, uh, yes, allow yourself to be bold and, and be confident that, that most folks want to help and most folks want to participate in a positive venture. I don't know how it's working in USA, but I know very well how it's working in Italy and Europe. And of course, for young musicians, it's very difficult to find the way to, to play because organization and the organizer are always looking for um, well-known names. Uh, if you are not well-known, um, they are not interested to invite you. But how you can w be well-known if you don't play? So at the end, is a circle, terrible circle. I, I can understand that it's not so easy to, 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 to find, to find a way to ask for playing because, but uh, one uh, mm, very uh, important thing is to have a project. Mm -hmm. Some new idea, some um, project idea that can be of interest of organizer. If you just ask to play, to, to make a concert, flute and piano, for example, no, absolutely not, because there's, it's difficult to rent a piano. So, so if you find another way to propose yourself, uh, also considering the market um, of music. For example, now we are in COVID time, and the, the only, almost only possible concerts are open air. And where? In the mountains, at the sea beach, uh, in the cavern, very strange and natural stages. So just create some new ideas, of course not with piano, because it's not possible to bring a piano there, but you can create a new ideas with music, connecting with nature, for example, birds, animals or something, and to create a new program that you can propose to organizer. So this is my suggestion for young musicians that want to play. Just it's an amazing idea. It's, it's wonderful. I didn't think about the fact that we as a flutist, we can actually play anywhere. And yes. we, it's just a question of an idea. I would like to talk about um, internet right now because um, with a project, at some point, any project is involved with communication and internet and social media presence and so on. And um, I'm seeing a lot of videos and contents, very interesting, um, interesting projects and so on. But um, so at some point I'm asking myself, if this project goes on, what's the next chapter? And what's the next chapter? And actually there are many, many projects which are just one chapter. And then when it works, it's just one shot. You can go, you can play, wonderful concept. Next time, same program, no. So it's like you, you, you need to always think ahead to have a kind of a series or something. And then if it's with birds and it's with, with mountains, it's like a theme and then try, trying to find your identity. But I have learned so much. It's, it's, it's so interesting to know that um, actually people would love to have music because there's so much you know, distress and everything. And there is an actual need of it. So as Luisa said, um, if you are, um, if you have a good 
idea. And as Kathy and Hannah said, that you have to be bold and then pursuing, I guess that it's maybe a very good opportunity right now, the fact that everything is changing. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, the money question is, is in Europe is kind of difficult because everybody, actually nobody wants to take a risk. So um, it's maybe good to stay ergonomic as Luisa, you say that like flute solo or not piano or something. My idea. Well, thank you so much um, to all of you, Kathy, Louisa, Mihi, uh, Hannah, for all joining us um, and just kind of sharing some of your story and the paths you've taken. Uh, I think it's been very helpful to all of us that have gotten to listen in uh, and hear your advice on questions and, you know, things that maybe people have already went through in life that maybe it helps them a little bit with it or things that maybe they haven't come across yet. Um, so they get to, you know, have some, have some great perspectives for that.